Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and get ready for a history lesson and a learning experience, because right now we are standing in Eagle Rock in front of this wonderful old building. It kind of gives itself away right away. This is the building with sparklets all over it, so this must be the sparklets building. And here are our sparklets tour guides right here, Bob and Betty Arns and Steve McCabe. Now, Steve, you are the plant manager today, right? Correct, correct. So you're gonna take us all through the innards of sparklets. Yeah, we'll take a tour through, see how we bottle the water, look at some of the architecture and talk about the building and things like that. Are we gonna get some water too? Cause Louie and we I haven't had that. anything to drink all morning. We can arrange that. We're thirsty as camels. We're ready for <laughs> some of that good, fresh sparklets bottled water. We've got plenty for you. <laughs> I bet you have. And Bob, you're here because your dad started all this back in? August 17, 1925. 1925. Right. Why Sparklets Water and why here in Eagle Rock? Because dad and mother found a well here in the property that was artesian and running down the street. And being there was a drought in the area at the time, and Dad believed in health and water. He decided that that would be a good business to go into. So wait a minute. There was a drought in L.A. back right. in 1925. Right. And what were they doing? Just walking around here and they saw water coming up out of the ground? No, he was looking for something to do, a job. He'd only been out here for two years with four boys in his family, and he needed a job. So he was an entrepreneur, so he decided drinking water was a thing to go into. Now that was revolutionary back then, wasn't it? Bottled drinking water? Not really, people think so, but there had been water, bottled water in the area since 19, 8, 1893. Really? Right. See, I thought bottled water was kind of a fad that started later on in this century. I didn't know it started way back then. No, it started a long time ago, but people are getting smarter and things are, other waters are getting poorer, you need bottled water today. Yeah, that good fresh water that comes. Now, didn't you point out to me that the original building, the original well was just right over where this building is now? About 200 feet from here, yes. The That's where they there. found the water. Right. Was it literally just bubbling up right out of the ground? Literally bubbling out of the ground. It had been sealed. A well had been sealed because they abandoned it for some reason. It used to be an agricultural area but it burst through the ceiling and was running down the street when Dad found it. Now, how did he know it was good water, and how did he know there was enough water there to make a, a business out of it? He checked into it, and he was Smith Emory Company on analysis and found it was excellent water. Mm -hmm. And we're still using the same water all these years later. It hadn't slowed down a bit. You're not worried that some morning you're going to show up? <laughs> and the well's gonna have run dry. How do we know there's enough water down there? You got a lot of employees depending on you, Steve. Yeah, we, uh, over the whole time that Sparklets has been bottling and all of the geologic changes that have happened in Southern California, we've never had the wells go dry or run out. Uh, it's a great source underneath us here that we've been tapped into and we've just been able to take advantage of that and use it. So Eagle Rock has a lot of water rummaging around down in here uh, in this area right here yes mm -hmm. so you're kind of you sending pipes out to get some <laughs> get some from other places <laughs> no we, it, all of our wells are on site we have deep wells right on site here uh, in the history they've uh, tried built drilling wells on the other side of Lincoln Avenue here and there's no water to be found on that side so it's all on this all right side here. and so that's where we've drilled the wells over time. Well your dad knew what he was doing and this is a wonderful building here. What was the idea of this sort of, of architecture? It looks like something you'd far, find in the Middle East. Well he figured this is sort of the oasis of the desert. Water and the oasis in the desert is very needed. So and this was, is this one of the original buildings? This is, was built in 1929. Wow. It's great. I bet you get a lot of comments on oh, it. Oh, yes, we do. I had a lot of tours come through here. Uh, we're uh, on a tour route for the city of Los Angeles for historic buildings and things like that. So we get people coming through regularly to tour and look at the architecture. Well, you know, we love historic buildings 
and we love historic water even more. <laughs> so let's go in and take a look. We're going to take the $5 tour, okay. hopefully for less than that because we're PBS. <laughs> we're cutting corners here. We're going to go in and see what's going on inside the Sparklets building. It's been here, the company's been here since 1925 right. when it was founded by your dad. This building has been here since 1929. That is correct. I'm getting my facts right. You're Come on, right. let's go inside. Well, before we start the main part of the tour, Steve has brought us into the cafeteria here to kind of the sparklets. Is this your shrine right here, Steve? Yes, this is our memorabilia closet. You have a little bit of everything here. Yeah, over time, all the things that uh, the plant has done here in this plant and the company has done from service pins and... Look at these great old pictures of, well, those are the old trucks mm -hmm. out front. Those are, boy, that goes back to the 20s at least. At least. <laughs> and here, this next one, this is my favorite. There is the building that we're in right now, and look, there's nothing around here. When that was built, you were out in the middle of the country. Uh, I don't think I was here when that was built. <laughs> you were out in the middle of the country. <laughs> it's just, there wasn't a whole lot around here in those days. <laughs> just a lot of fresh, good water. <laughs> and it's very small homes. And <laughs> here are two fellows. Fellows, how long have you all worked for Sparklets? Uh, I worked for Sparklets for 38 years. Uh -huh. I was here 41 years. So you all know what you're talking about. A little bit. If we're please. standing in front of the memorabilia closet here, as Steve calls it. Let's talk about some of the stuff in here. I'm looking right now at this old bottle right here. Now this looks like an old one. It is. That's a very old Shasta bottle. That, that, that uh, was developed long before I ever joined the, uh, the, the organization. Is one of the original? Yes. Garden and the the, these decanters are probably one of the first bottles that I can recall. Now, wait a minute. This is Shasta. What happened to Sparklets? Let's see. Uh, can you explain that one, Robert? Yes. Shasta w w had the carbonated water business in this whole city. We decided to go into this business also. So we brought ours out with a 10-cent deposit on it. And we took over the siphon bottle business in which later years we changed into the carbonated bottles and did away with this here because using this you lost too much of your gas. Ah, uh, and look up here, these are soft drinks up that's here. That's right. This, Can I grab one of these? This, this looks like... Well, that get, yeah, that, that was a sugar-free, that's just Starlet. Starlet root out. beer. That's right, we had several, well, all of our uh, uh, products at that time, uh, we, we went into the, the sugar-free uh, formula. But this was, uh, I believe this was originated somewhere in the mid-50s. So you all yeah. tried out, here's a Starlet that. Orange, yeah. Starlet star, uh, Sparkita well, root the, beer. The, the Sparkita, all of the Sparkita problems, the Sparkita up, we had Sparkita root beer, Sparkita Orange, there were six different flavors. And uh, that was, it, they were, Sparklets was producing that when I joined the organization. Matter, matter of fact, when I signed up in February of 47, I applied for a beverage route and there was none available. So I accepted the position as a direct salesman. But this was a big product and in those days we sold this specifically to uh, markets. Then in the two this, wait a minute, this is the water though, Sparklet Spring Water. Yes, it was, all, of, all of our beverages was made with our spring water. So Every, even the soft drinks everything. were made with the water That's from right. here. That's right. But you're out of the, you went out of the soft drink business by yes. the end of the 50s. Uh, I would say so. That's, a, that's probably about right. I just wonder if any of this I wonder if any of this is still any good. <laughs> it's it's hard to say, but I would I would rather suspect that it's uh, it's don't shake it, it too hard. Sorry, yeah. don't shake it too hard. <laughs> I, I I would suspect it still has some There's of its original flavor. There's still some bubbles flavor. in yes, there. Look at that. Yes, there is. This is kind of like a fine old bottle of wine. It is. I bet if we open this thing up on a special <laughs> occasion. Yes, I, I think that we could, we could all get very merry on that. <laughs> no question about it. Well, this is great. This must bring back uh, oh. a lot of memories for you just looking at all this old it, stuff. It certainly does. 
The uh, half-gallon uh, bottle, the green bottle, was introduced uh, in about 1949 or 50. That's right. Oh, look at this one. I'm going to let you hold oh, this right. one. That was, a, that was a big success. That the, was in this piece here. Uh-huh. Yep. Exactly. And it would have that kind of a handle to it? Yes. Or you've got no. Them separately. Uh-huh. Yeah. Boy, this is great. It, it was. It was a. It was a very novel idea at the time, and we made quite a splash when we first introduced this to the Los Angeles area. What we tried to do was to give a bottle away free to every other person on the street, and our representatives would go down the street to every other house and just leave a bottle on the front uh, porch. Who was your competition back then? Well, we had Arrowhead, of course. And, uh, you can see Arrowhead in these hallowed halls. You're afraid the glass isn't going to crack behind us? That's true. Get your mouth washed out with soap <laughs> after that. Yeah. But we, we felt that uh, we had the product, we knew we had the product, and we, uh, we knew what we were doing, and we had the guys to do it. So yeah. we had a very successful operation. We, were all, we all enjoyed ourselves very much. Very much. Great, so, great company to work for. It was. It was always had kind of a family feel to it. Definitely, because there are three families that originally started yes. the thing, and the Arns and the Bullingers continued on for a number of years. So everybody who worked here kind of knew each yeah, other, yeah. stayed here a long time. Very Bob good. probably knew your dad very well. He was a very hands-on kind of a guy. Yep. Very, def very definitely. In fact, we had uh, at one time more Smiths working here, and we did oranges. <laughs> really? <laughs> All one family, too. Really? Right, right. When, when folks joined Sparkus, they made a career decision, and most of them made this their only career decision. Wow. Uh, we used to, uh, you know, we'd, on our retail routes, we knew that after 10 or 15 years, that bottle was going to get heavy. And then we'd, we'd have to meet with our people and say, well, maybe you should give thought to a, another career decision. Transferring either into production, perhaps, or transferring into an accounting, some other position within the company, and many of them, many of them did. Steve, you're here. You're listening to all these stories here. You picking up any uh, tidbits of information? <laughs> all useful. All useful. Do you have old timers coming by and just to, to reminisce and to visit? And yeah, we uh, regularly have people come by. They'll stop by and say hi. And people that have been here spent their whole careers working here, and now they're in the 50, 60 years old. They'll still come by and see people working here today that they worked with 10, 15 years ago, and they're always welcome. And everybody likes to see them. All right, we're ready. We've spent some time here in the memorabilia room. We've seen some old water that we haven't been able to taste yet nope. because you told us it's probably better not to uncap this stuff. <laughs> Let's see some, we're gonna be able to see some fresh water, right? Yes, we're gonna go through the process and see how we do what we do here. Okay, Steve, we have broken off from our tour group because it was getting a little unwieldy there. You have brought us into this is literally ground zero right here. Yes, this is the water processing area. This is where the, it happens for us here in the water processing area. Our well water comes all the way over here from across the street where we talked about the wells. It comes up here. From here, we go through a reverse osmosis system. And what that does basically is it takes all of the minerals out of the water, takes it all the way down to just water molecules. At that point, it's purified water. But wait a minute, these machines are filled, these pumps are filled with water that's coming directly from the wells. Yes, right from the wells. But why would you want to strip the stuff out of it that makes it special, makes it what it is? It is the minerals and water that give it its flavor. But what we did as an organization is they made the decision as we were growing, they said, how are we going to maintain our consistency from population base to population, city to city? So what they did is they developed or uh, continued to apply the RO technologies, take the minerals out, and then we remineralize the water with a recipe that the company has established. Wait a minute, you have a water re recipe? That's what we call it. That's what we call it, our recipe. Now where is that happening? That's in our mineral room. After we take the minerals out of the water, we want to put back certain minerals because we want a certain flavor to the water. So this is, this, these big vats here are being remineralized. Correct. This is the remineralization. 
and we have it mixed up, food grade minerals that we receive and we mix up a concentrate and then we enter that back into the water. We introduce that back How in. How secret is the Sparklets water recipe? Well, the Colonel has nothing on us. <laughs> really? Guard it, careful. It's, it's a pretty well uh, guarded recipe for what we do. Uh, we do have printouts that talk about what's in the water because we have to report that to the regulatory agencies. So all of your Sparklets water isn't coming from this one location. It's coming from other right. locations. That's why you're saying you had to have a consistency from place to place. Right, as Sparklets has grown from this plant here in 1929, as the company has grown, we have plants in the Bay Area, we have plants in the San Diego area, and as customers will move from one location to another and they're used to our products. They, they want that same recipe. Exactly. exactly. All right, let's go on down here because I know there's more just around the corner. More machine. <laughs> Yes, this is our ozonation area. Wait a minute, your what? Ozonation area. Ozonation area. Yes, it's a requirement of the food industry that we protect the consumer, and this is the, what we use for sanitation in the bottled water industry, is ozone. We inject that into the water, and it sanitizes the process. I'm gonna take your word for that. That <laughs> sounds a little technical for me, but you're meeting all standards. All standards. All the water standards are being met here. Yes. And I'm looking over here, these are the these are the empty bottles that are coming by. Right, these are the bottles that are coming back from uh -oh. our customers. Stay up with it. Yeah. These come back from our customers and they go into our process to get washed and sanitized before we refill them. Yeah, look at all the soap down here. You're doing a good job of washing them. <laughs> That's for chain lube and on the crates. Oh, okay, and everybody sends their bottles back in. Now I gotta tell you, so far, except for that old water and some of those old soft drinks in the history room, I have yet to see a drop of Sparklet's water. Where is the water that we can actually eyeball? What we'll do is it's actually the filling room is on the other side of this wall right here. So as we go up and follow the bottles through, we'll go into the filling room and see it getting I filled. see some water. Oh! The water. Now this is called the... This is the filling room where we actually fill the five gallon bottles. So there's the water right there. That's the finished product after it's remineralized and ozonated right into the sanitized containers. Wow, and how much water comes through here uh, how much volume are we talking about? Uh, we do about 3,350 bottles an hour, about 45,000 bottles a day. 45,000 five-gallon bottles a day from this plant alone? Yes, yes. Boy, it's loud in here. Why is it so loud? It's got to do with the equipment and the way that the, it's designed and the way that it operates. So it's a pretty simple process. To, the clean bottles that have been washed back here just come through the line. These tubes shoot it full of water. Yes. And it goes right outside to be uh, loaded on the truck. Right, it gets palletized right outside and then we put it right onto the trucks as it goes out to the branches to take it to the customer. Oh my gosh, look. This is a beehive activity out here. This is a busy place down at this end of the yard. This is where everything comes together down here at this end. So it's all automated. It just loads right onto the trucks. Look, we got the trucks right out here ready to roll. Yeah, we have, uh, we received the empties here. They go through the process and the fulls come out down here and then we take them and put them right onto our inner branch trucks or onto our route trucks. You know, really, this is a pretty simple process, isn't it? It is. It, they've, over time, they've developed it and honed it and refined it. Very efficient, very lean. It probably used to be a lot more labor intensive oh, yeah. back in the early days. Oh yeah, like the depalletizing. We have some technologies employed here that before they used to do it all by hand. These are now polycarbonate bottles. These bottles, when they were glass, weighed about 40 pounds each, empty. So you were talking a heavy bottle, all those Wait people. a minute, these bottles weighed 40 pounds empty. The glass bottles did. That's wow. those, the people that did this in days gone by, they were working son of a guns. 
Boy, this is something out here. It's a busy place. In the afternoons when we come back with all the route trucks after delivering to our customers, we have about six or eight fork trucks doing a choreographed dance down here. Well, look, you've got one, two, three right here. They're all experienced drivers, and they just do a nice dance all day, all shift. Loading up these trucks. 45,000 bottles a day. Now, wait a minute. I spot some sparklets water over here. <laughs> I want to get a glass of water. Well, that's what this is for. Here, over here. Give me a little bit of... Here, you get some too. Oh boy, it's that Sparklets recipe. Always the same. Now, Steve, after drinking some of that water, I think we need to come in the Quality Assurance Laboratory uh-oh, you're running some tests in here. Yes. Now, what are we testing today? Uh, I'm measuring the fluoride to make sure the level of fluoride is as we specify in the quality assurance. Part of the recipe. Yes. Now, do you always, uh, do you check the water every day to make yes. sure it's up to standards? We uh, do the test every day on every product. At the beginning of the process or at the end of the process? At the beginning of the process and in the process, also step all by the step, through all it. the way through it. Because we've learned about the remineralization. True. And the, what's the other one? Ozonization. Ozonization. And we, in, uh, here we, are all your test tubes here. Yes. And what is this? This isn't water, is it? <laughs> no, what it's is, not. <laughs> this is. That isn't going to pass the test right there. This is one of the media we use for testing the, uh, the purity of the water. It will tell us whether we have, we need to turn off the valve, turn on the valve on the line. So you're constantly checking it. Yes. And be honest now. I mean, I know you're going to, you work for the company and all that. But this water. <laughs> Stand over there, Steve. This water is good, clean water, isn't it? Yes. I got test the product every day on the process myself, and I do drink it since nine years I've been with the company every day. You drink it every day? Yes. Well, that's good enough for me. This is a state-certified laboratory that we have here at the Sparklets plant, and Hung Lee is our food scientist. He's eminently qualified to do all these things for us here. Now, what if you found something in the water that wasn't right? You pick up the red telephone and give him a call? Yes. <laughs> you shut he, him down? He will know right away. Yes, uh, I think according to the procedure, he had to shut down the operation if he sees something negative on the... We actually have about three dozen checks that we do every hour throughout the process. Wow. Being ISO 9000 certified, everything that we do has to meet a certain criteria, and if it doesn't, that's when we put the stop button on and make sure that we get things balanced and corrected. Now, if somebody snuck a bottle of Arrowhead water in here <laughs> and put it in one of your test tubes, would you know that something was up? Yes, we know. You could tell right away. Right. Uh, just a simple test, the conductivity test, we can tell right away. So, <laughs> it really is completely different. Arrowhead, Sparklets, all of these brands that we see on the, the shelves, each one of them really, when they're tested, not just to the taste, but when they're tested, is totally different. Yes, it's that we were talking about the minerals in water that give it its flavor. They also give it its character that we can test for scientifically, and each one has a different profile of minerals in the water. Wow. Okay, we're ending up out here in the parking lot out here. What are we ending up looking at, Steve? We're going to take a look at the uh, old antique route truck and the latest electric route truck. Oh my gosh, this goes way back, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, this is one of those early, early trucks. Now, how do you use this thing? Does it still run? It still runs. We had it refurbished, rebuilt. We don't use it on routes anymore. Yeah. It's just for when Probably we Probably in parades or something. Yes, exactly, you? exactly. Sparklets for the discriminating. California's finest drinking water, pure artesian water, phone, Albany 1171. Now the old timers will remember when the phones were like that, won't they? They sure will. <laughs> All right, and we got over here, 
Was it painted orange and green like that? Yes, it was. Boy, that would catch your eye, wouldn't it? Sure does. And over here is the new Sparklets. What is this? This is an electric route truck. This is a joint venture with the uh, a number of partners that have gone into it in environmental awareness and conservation going away from fuels to electricity. And this ah. actually runs a route. We've run a route in the Covina area with this truck. So you've got an electric truck, state of the art down there, and the old truck right here. And come on everybody, we're gonna get a shot here. Come on everybody, get in the shot. And here's the water over here in the tanks, right? This right, is that's where- The water where... as it comes in from the well? Exactly, exactly. Wow. And all the processing that we went through on that end. This is great, everybody come on in. Boy, this has been a great day. <laughs> We're sure enjoying Your it. Your dad knew what he was doing when he started yeah. all this, didn't he? He was pretty right. <laughs> yeah, boy. He, he was always looking ahead. Boy, this is great. And they're still looking ahead today with the gas, with boy. the electric powered trucks. The the folks that took over after Jack and I retired are doing one heck of a fine job. Right. And we certainly appreciate it. Well, the Sparklets tradition continues. It's been right here in Eagle Rock since 1925. That is right. And I just drank some of that water just a minute ago. It's still just as good as it ever was. That's why I'm 80 years old and still going. <laughs> oh, you attribute it all to Sparklet's oh, water. All Sparklet's good drinking water. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. Part of the Sparklet's family over here. We've had a great day. Thank you. It's thank been our you pleasure. very much. Thank you. This has been a wonderful day here in Eagle Rock, touring the Sparklet's facility, which is alive and well and still going. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.